Yo, 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 yo. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk about one-step equations. So, one-step equations are the most simple equations there are to solve. And these steps that we learned today is what we're going to use for any kind of other complicated equations that we learn later on. So if we can learn how to do these inverse operations, these steps today, we're going to be golden when we learn how to do more complicated, complicated equations. So our first key term is inverse operations. Inverse operations is very, 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 very important when it comes to solving equations. They are operations that undo each other. They are the opposite of one another. So, for example, addition and subtraction are inverse operations. They are the opposite. Addition undoes subtraction, where subtraction undoes addition. Multiplication and division are also inverse operations. Okay, so multiplication will undo division, and division will undo multiplication. They are the opposite of one another. And this is super important when we're talking about one-step equations and how to know how to solve them. So here are four examples of one-step equations. And these are just addition and subtraction. And then the next slide, we'll look at multiplication and division. So the difference between equations and expressions, so 6.1, our previous two videos, was about expressions. And the difference is equations have an equal sign and something else on the other side of the equal sign. So if we look here, I have something on the left side of the equal sign, and I also have something on the right side of the equal sign. I also have a variable in my equation. So I have a letter here. I have an X. This one happens to have an M, but it's just a letter is what represents a variable. It can be any letter. It doesn't really matter. We use X, M, Y, N a lot. Not, we try to use variables that don't really look like numbers. They can't be mistaken for numbers as much as we can. Now, the goal of an equation is to figure out what the variable represents. That's always our goal. We're trying to figure out, okay, cool. So I have this equation. I have this variable, this letter that represents a number. I just don't know what number it is. So my goal is to figure out, well, what does the, the variable, the letter, represent? Which number is it representing right now? Now, in the beginning with a lot of these equations, you guys are going to be able, some of you are going to be able to look at it and do it in your head immediately and know what the answer is. And that is great. Okay, so like this first one, the answer is 8. For those of you who know, you, so a lot of people say, well, Mr. G, 8 plus 7 is equal to 15, so I know that X has to be 8. And that's great, but what, I don't want us to focus necessarily on what the answer is. I want us to focus on the process to get there because that's what's going to set us up for success next week. That's what's going to set us up for success in the future when we're solving multiple step equations that are more complicated than these ones where you cannot do mental math. So we're focused on the process and we're focused on using inverse operations. So our goal is to figure out what this variable is. I already know it's 8, but I don't care. I want to talk about the process. So in order for us to solve an equation, we have to get that variable by itself. When I say by itself, if we look at on the left side of the equal sign here, I have an x, and I also have this plus 7. So because I have an x and I have this plus 7, what I want to do is I want to have just x on the left side of the equal sign. I want to get rid of this plus 7 here. And the way we move stuff around, what we do is we kind of move, we manipulate it. We move stuff around from left to right. And the way we do that is by doing what's called inverse operations, by doing the opposite, by canceling stuff out. So if I have x plus 7, I want to get rid of this plus 7 to get this variable by itself. So what I can do is I can subtract 7 here. Because subtraction is the opposite of addition. Subtraction undoes addition. And I'm going to subtract the same number that I'm trying to get rid of. Because 7 minus 7 is equal to 0. I cancel. This minus 7 undoes positive 7. It's, almost, it's also a 0 pair, which is what we learned about back in October, or not even October, it was like in August and September. But with one rule with equations is whatever we do on one side of the equal sign, we have to do on the other side of the equal sign. Because we have to maintain balance. Equations is all about maintaining balance on both the left and the right-hand side. 
So if I decide that I want to subtract 7 on the left-hand side of the equal sign, I have to subtract 7 on the right-hand side of the equal sign so that both sides remain equal. I can't just take away 7 from one side and not do anything to the other because now we're creating an imbalance here. Both sides are equal, so we always have to do the same thing to both sides. So 7 minus 7 is 0. Because of that, it cancels out. Now I have to do 15 minus 7 over here on the right-hand side because that's what we're writing down. I did minus 7 on the left side because to make that 0, I'm going to do minus 7 on the right-hand side. 15 minus 7 is 8. What we always have to do is we always have to bring down whatever is remaining. So I have my x remaining here, and I still always have to bring down my equal sign. So I'm left with x equals 8, and then done. I don't have to do anything else because my variable is now by itself. There's nothing else over here, and I know that x equals 8. We already knew that that was the answer, but this is the process to get there. And this process is super important because eventually, you guys, you're going to be working out equations that look like this. Okay, you're also going to be working out equations that look like this. And so these ones aren't quite as easy to figure out what the x is in our head. And so if we know how to do these basic steps, it makes these actually really easy to solve. So that's why the focus is on showing these steps, and we're going to be required to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit quicker through this next one. So right here for m minus 12 equals 28. So that means some number minus 12 is equal to 28. So I don't know what m is. My goal is to get this by itself. So I'm going to look at it. It's on the left side of the equal sign. So what I'm going to look at is I want to get rid of this minus 12 here. So if I want to get rid of this minus 12, sometimes what I like to do, you guys, I like to draw a line on the equal sign to show that whatever I do on one side of the equal sign, I have to do on the other side. So everything, every step should be the same on the left side as it should be on the right side. So because this is subtraction, we're going to do the inverse operation, which is the opposite of subtraction, which is addition. And I'm going to add the same number that I'm subtracting. So I'm going to do the inverse by adding 12. Because negative 12 plus 12, 12 negative, 12 positive, that equals 0. That was why we did it. We always, Whenever we do something in equations, we're always trying to get zeros or ones. We're always trying to cancel something out. These would cancel, but whatever I do on the left, I also have to do on the right. So I need to make sure I add 12 to the right-hand side as well. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. They cancel. I still have to bring down this m. i got to bring down my equal sign. 28 plus 12 is 40. So m is equal to 40. Now, the way that we check our answers to see if we get it right is we can always take this answer and plug it back into my original equation. So I have 40. If I take in and I replace, m is 40. So if I replace the m with the 40, 40 minus 12, well, that is 28, which is what it's supposed to be equal to. So I did it correct. Just like over here, if I take in this 8 and plug it back in, 8 plus 7 is 15. So it does work. Go ahead and try these last two on your own. Just go follow the exact same steps. Try these last two on your own by actually showing the steps and then seeing how we do. Did you pause already? You should have paused already. If you haven't done so, you should have paused and worked these out. So don't hit play until you've paused and worked them out. Okay, so y minus 15 equals negative 27. So I have subtraction here. My goal is to get this y by itself. Whatever I do on one side of the equal sign, I have to do on the other side of the equal sign. I have to do my inverse operations to cancel stuff out. I want to cancel out minus 15. So if I cancel this out, my y will be all alone. So to cancel out minus 15, I'm going to do plus 15 because that's the inverse. That's the opposite. And whatever I do on one side of the equal sign, I have to do on the other side of the equal sign. So I'll do plus 15 on both sides. Negative 15 plus 15 is 0. That's the whole reason why we did it. I have to bring down my y. I have to bring down my equal sign. Now I actually have to do some work here. Negative 27 plus 15. This is where a lot of people are still messing up. If I have negatives and positives, so I have 27 negatives, 15 positives. So when I combine negative, I can even work it off off to the side, because sometimes I like to work side by side. I have negatives and positives that I'm combining, which really means I'm actually subtracting these, and I'm keeping the sign of the bigger number. 
I have more negatives than positives, so my answer is negative. And then I need to do 27 minus 15. Well, 27 mi minus 15 is 12. So my answer is negative 12. So y, and then when I write down my answer, I should write it down as y equals negative 12. Just like I did here, x equals 8. m equals 40. You're writing what the variable is equal to. Now if I were to take negative 12 and plug it back in here, I'm going to do this in black. If I take negative 12 and I plug it back in for y, negative 12 minus 15. Well, negative 12 minus 15, if I had 12 negatives and 15 negatives, then really I have 27 negatives total. I'm going to add them together. So this does equal to this. So we're, we did good. Okay, last one. Trying to figure out what n is equal to on this one. So n plus 27 equals negative 42. So if I have plus 27, what I need to do is I need to do the opposite. So I'm gonna, whatever I do on one side, the equal sign, I have to do on the other. So I'm going to subtract 27 from both sides. Because 27 minus 27 is 0. But now i got to bring down my variable. i got to bring down an equal sign. So n equals whatever negative 42 minus 27 is. Now, a common mistake here. What a lot of people would do is on negative 42 minus 27, they would probably actually do the subtraction. And they'd say, oh, okay, cool, I'm done. And they would keep a negative. That would not work here. So if I write it off here to the side, negative 42 minus 27. If I did keep change, change, this would be plus negative 27. I'm just combining 42 negatives with 27 negatives. 42 negatives and 27 negatives, when you add two numbers with the same sign, you always add them and keep the sign. So I know my answer is negative, 42 plus 27, 69. Oh, there's my final answer. And I'm done. N equals negative 69. Okay. Now, we're going to look at four examples of one-step equations that are dealing with multiplication and division. Now, the process is the exact same. Our goal is to get the variable by itself. By, we're going to isolate it by doing inverse operations, by doing the opposite. But we know multiplication division, and division, those are opposites of one another. So looking at this first problem right here, I have 4 times x equals 44. Again, a lot of people are going to say, Mr. G, I know that 4 times 11 is 44, so x has to equal 11. And you're not wrong. You are absolutely correct. The problem is, is I want to show you how we, we got to show the steps on how to get there. So because this is multiplication, I want to get my variable by itself, just like before. So I've got to cancel out this times 4. And the way we do that is we do division. The way we show division, to cancel out multiplication, we divide. But I divide by using fractions, which is why we've been saying fractions are always just division. Because this is what I do is when we divide 4x by 4, we're actually allowed to divide. I know you're saying, but these aren't common terms. Like I can't, like terms, I can't divide 4x by 4. We actually can't. We're just dividing the numbers. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. That leaves me with 1x. Is there any reason to write a 1 in front of an x? And the answer is no, because 1 times x is just x. So when we have a number divided by itself, they cancel out when we have the variable there. And that's left with x. And remember, we're working on both sides of the equal sign. So whatever I did on one side, I have to do on the other. So I brought down my x, 44 divided by 4 is 11. And that's how I just show my work at x equals 11 by showing that division cancels out multiplication. And this is a requirement. This is not a suggestion. So if you guys are ever doing anything with equations and I'm checking your paper and pencil and work, if you don't show me these steps, I'm going to mark them wrong. I'm going to mark them wrong. I'm going to count it as incomplete. For the second one here, or actually let's look at this bottom one here and then you guys are going to try the next one on your own. We're going to try this bottom left one. So why over 8 equals 4. So a lot of us say, oh, I hate fractions. This isn't a fraction. This is division. I mean, it is a fraction, but fractions are division. So this is y divided by 8. So I want to cancel out this divided by 8 so I can have y by itself. So the way I cancel out divided by 8 is I multiply by 8. And whatever I do on one side, I do to the other. We show multiplication by writing parentheses. These 8s cancel because if I expand this here, here's what happens. If I were to multiply this, this is just 8 times y. Well, that's 8 times y, and I still have that all over 8, right? Well, does not look like it is over here now? What's 8 over 8? Well, that's 1, so it really goes away. And I'm left with just y. 
equals 4 times 8 is 32. And I'm done with y equals 32. So whenever we have a fraction, we multiply to get cancel out. So because opposite of division is multiplication. 32 divided by 8 is 4. If I were to take this y equals 32 and I substitute it into here, 32 divided by 8 is 4. Okay. I know this has been a long video. You guys, have, I appreciate you guys staying tuned this far, but please pause and try these last two on your own because this practice is super important. Pause and try these last two on your own. Okay, so yes, I have a negative sign. It doesn't change anything. Here's multiplication. So I want to cancel out multiplication by doing the inverse operation, which is division. So I can get my variable by itself. So I'm just going to divide by whatever's being multiplied. So because it's being multiplied by negative, I'm going to divide by negative. So negative 5x divided by negative 5 is positive 1. Now remember, whatever I do on the left side, I have to do on the right side. So I'm also going to divide by negative 5 on the right side as well. Those cancel. That's why we did it. I'm left with x equals 40 divided by negative 5. Positive divided by negative is always negative. 40 divided by 5 is 8. So I'm left with x equals negative 8. If I were to take that and plug it back in, negative 5 times negative 8. Negative times a negative is positive. 5 times 8 is 40. So it checks out. It works. Finally, m divided by negative 6 equals 13. So what I'm going to do here, this represents division. This is m divided by negative 6. You cancel out division, we multiply. So I'm going to multiply by negative 6. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. These cancel. That's why we did it. Times negative 6 cancels out divided by negative 6. My variable is still there. I bring down my equal sign. And then I actually have to do 13 times 6. Positive times a negative is always negative. And now I actually have to work out my 13 times 6. This is where, what I like to, I just like to work it out on the side so my, my steps from my equation don't get messed up. So I'm going to work it out, just wrote it off to the side here, to get 78. So m is equal to negative 78. And done, done. Your steps should all look like this. This is going to take practice. If you do not practice, you will struggle for the next three sections because we have to know these steps in order to be successful. And then and you have to use equations for a long time in math. So things to remember, let's get that down. Whatever you do with one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side. And then we have three independent practice problems for you to solve. So please solve all three. Take your time, show your steps, and then we'll go over all of this the next time I see you guys. So thank you for watching. Uh, I know this is a long video, so thanks for sticking through it. I hope this helped a lot, and uh, we'll get more practice with this later on. So thanks for watching. Gradius out.